Procter and Gamble uh, results just out. Earnings grew 17 percent to $1.83 a share. The top estimates of $1.72 revenue. $21.9 billion was also ahead of expectations, down around just under $21.6. You want us now to break down the report. John Muller, chairman and CEO of Procter & Gamble. John, just historically, when, when did you, we had you on, you were the CFO for a long time. When did you take over uh, the top spot? How long has it been? Time flies. <laughs> it was announced in July of uh, 21 and became effective in November of 21. So of 21. Around two you, years. You, John, if, the reason I bring it up is that this looks like a pretty good number, and I want to talk organic sales. That's what we always talk about because, again, it looks like it's above um, what the forecast you gave last time you were on. And maybe you give conservative forecasts, or maybe you're pretty good at this. And the reason I'm saying that, have you missed yet uh, on a quarter since, since you came in? Uh, have you, have you uh, posted a quarter that was below uh, analyst expectations? No, and you're right. This is a very strong quarter. Um, Seven percent organic sales growth. Every category growing. Personal health care, uh, double digits. Home care in the teens. Um, feminine care, fabric care, hair care, uh, uh, laundry, grooming, high single digits. Um, and you see that flow through to the bottom line. Uh, we invested significantly in continuing to build our brands and bring innovation to the market. And at the same time, we're able to deliver significant uh, earnings per share growth, as you said, uh, 17 percent, which is 21 percent on a constant currency basis. Free cash flow productivity, 97 percent. We returned $3.8 billion to share owners. It really sets us up well. This is the first quarter of our fiscal year, and it sets us up well to deliver against our guidance uh, and uh, potentially uh, deliver towards the high end of that. Yeah, I, I, maybe you can be more specific about uh, what, what, whether you need to raise guidance and exactly what that be. The point I was getting at, and I've, you know, it's my hometown. I've followed it for a long time. I mean, you had AG, and he was, you know, everybody thought AG was the greatest thing in the world. He left, and you had, you know, a couple of guys that didn't quite cut it. And, and then AG had to come back. Weren't you CFO through most of Yeah, there you were. There was the guy sitting there the whole time toiling in obscurity. And, and uh, maybe the right guy, was, would you say the right guy was right under the, the board's nose at, at the time, John? Um, I've worked for uh, four different CEOs, if you include AG, on two different occasions. I admire and respect each of them. They each contributed a significant amount to where we are today and the strength of our position. This doesn't just happen overnight. Um, and, uh, uh, but I'm happy uh, that I get to contribute at an even higher level now. All right. What about, I, I was just saying, you know, the stock looks good. It, it uh, you know, it looked all over. And, uh, and you were on Squawk Box a lot. And that probably didn't have any, you know, that probably didn't hurt uh, just the whole. Uh, let me ask you about uh, the consumer. Are you seeing trading down yet, John, or just, we had retail sales yesterday. Nothing, are you confounded by, by how this is happening and how strong the consumer remains to, uh, at this point? Well, I focus, as you would expect, primarily on uh, our business, and I'm not confounded. We've invested a, a lot in improving the superiority of our products in categories where performance drives brand choice. We haven't seen a lot of private label progress. If you look pre- and post-pandemic, for example, in the U.S., the market share number is 16% uh, in both periods. We have built share throughout that period, including the last quarter. If we look at volumes as an indicator of uh, uh, consumer strength, the last four quarters, as, we've, as we took pricing, volume was uh, four quarters ago was minus six, then minus three, then a little over one, now a little bit below one, rounding up to one. But importantly, in the United States, uh, plus three, in Western Europe, plus two, and some of the large enterprise uh, developing markets uh, like Mexico, Brazil, India, strong volume growth. So, uh, and that doesn't surprise me, uh, given the strength uh, of our offerings and how they improve consumers' lives. Tell me about inflation. On, uh, how, how would you characterize it versus last quarter and, and versus your expectations? It's, it's pretty much in line with our expectations. Uh, we expected about $800 million in commodity help going into the year. We still stand at, at about that number. On the other hand, uh, foreign exchange has gotten about $600 million worse since we went into the year. That's about a billion-dollar headwind. 
And of course, we have uh, the interest rate uh, headwinds that we're dealing with as well. But if you look at that in totality and compare it to where we were uh, a year ago or two years ago, it's, it's a much better uh, situation. You talked about volume. You talked about uh, uh, organic sales. The dollar obviously has, that puts net sales at 6%, organic at, at plus 7 But what about uh, price increases? Are they sticking right now? Is, it, is that account for some of the, the, the gains that you have? Will you be able to continue to do that, or is that going to eventually dry up? Well, pricing uh, did contribute seven points of growth to the top line. Mix was uh, a point of benefit, and then I mentioned uh, one point of, of volume decline. So that's right. how you get to the, the, the top line numbers. Um, and, and, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we're building share. Again, if you look at the U.S., in the quarter we just completed, uh, value share is up uh, 40 basis points. Volume share is up 50 basis points. Uh, so that's definitely ind indicative of, of all of this uh, kind of working. Uh, for uh, obvious reasons, we don't uh, comment on future direction of, of pricing, uh, but I will tell you that uh, we're happy with where we sit currently. John, can I just push a little further on that? I, I know you can't give us too much on it, but there have been a lot of questions from investors. They, they want stocks where you can continue to see pricing power. They're, they're worried, though, that that has run its course. and that uh, most companies aren't going to be able to eke much more out in pricing power. Is, is, do you feel like you're pushing up against a wall at some point that consumers aren't going to be able to continue spending more? Well, I don't think pricing is an endless well, and, and you know, we're pricing just to, to not even fully recover uh, commodity costs. But there are ele other elements of uh, top-line growth that I'm very excited about. Our innovation program has never been stronger. Um, look at something like um, uh, Dawn Power Wash, uh, which has grown uh, the category 90 percent since it was launched, and it's grown the Dawn business 50 percent since it was launched. Uh, as a standalone brand, it would be the third largest brand in the category. Mm -hmm. So if we can continue creating value for consumers uh, uh, through innovation, if we can continue holding costs uh, with our productivity programs uh, as low as is reasonable, we should be in very good shape.